Hello everyone. Today I'm going to keep the video short, I hope, and I'm just going to demonstrate how to render graphics out of R in a way that's appropriate for publication. So the first chunk of code I'm going to use here just generates a data set. So what I've got is I, I create a, a vector x, which is equal to 100 random, 100 numbers drawn from the standard normal distribution. And then I create another vector y, which is correlated to x, but also has some random error added to it as well. So it's basically two correlated variables. Then I create this function here. And just if you're interested, this letters is a, a, a data set that's, that's contained in R. I don't know the word they use for that. It's a set of, basically it's a vector embedded in R and it contains all the letters of the alphabet. So what I'm doing here with this, I make a function and then I call that function and I use it to basically make up a bunch of gibberish words. And I want to use them as labels because it's useful for demonstrating how these graphics work. So I've created a data set, I've created some labels, I create a data frame and then, let's try this in its entirety. And then I cast or I re, I change all these data into numeric values. So after running all of this code, I've basically got a data frame now with labels. These are just made up words and data. Now, now I want to plot the data. And when it comes to plotting data, there's the standard plotting technique. We'll just show you that first. This is the how we might plot it. So I'll plot X and Y. Um, and then I also want to predict a best fit line, so or, or plot a best fit line. So I'll use the LM function with predict. This will output some predictions. And then I plot, after I've used the plot function, I can use this lines function. It will plot another, it'll plot a line with the coordinates based on the data that I just set or made. And then I'll create, so put the labels on the plot as well. So if I just do this, I can generate the plot. And maybe it looks the way I like it or not. There's all sorts of tweaking I can do. I can change the size of it. I can change, right, like I can change the features on this plot. But once you've got it looking the way you want, then the question is, how do you export it? Now, you can manually export these things. Save as image, copy a clipboard, save as PDF. But I, th I, think I'm, I think the best way to do it is to actually do it programmatically. And what you do is you set up a device. In this case, I'm going to use the PNG function. What this is going to do is it's going to open up a device to be written to so that the graphics that I create will be written to this device, this graphic, this part of my, the graphic system on my computer. And it will be written as a P, using this PNG function. So it's going to be written as a, as a PNG file, which is a good file for scientific graphics. It's a good format for scientific graphing. Okay, so this is the function call. And what this basically does is it opens up the graphic device. And then at the other end, after I've, I've, I've written everything I want to the graphics device, I put dev.off. This dev.off function basically stops writing to that graphics device. So I, I open it up. I write a bunch of stuff to it by running plot, and then I turn it off. And within this function, there's a bunch of options that I can choose. The width and height tell me about the dimensions of the actual plot. The number, in this case, the number of pixels, wide and high because often we need high resolution graphics. So we have a lot of pixels that helps make it high resolution. But then the other thing to pay attention to here is this res number. And you can experiment with this because every graphic will be a little bit, every graphical element will be a little bit different. But basically this tells us the pixels per inch and this tells us the dimensions. And there's a relationship between these dimensions and pixels per inch. And you've got to get that dimension right in order for the graphic to look the way you want. These other parameters, this is the background color. You can set it to transparent, you can set it to white. And this is just the units. This this is the default. So if I if I do this now, I just run this, and then I take a look at where I've written this file. I'll show it to you. That's the file as it's been written, and we can zoom in a little bit, and you can see that it looks pretty good. The, there's not a lot of bleeding around the graphical elements, and you don't want that. It doesn't look very professional. And if you like the size of these things, great. I find that a t um, a ratio where if it's a square plot where the width and the height are equal, if the resolution is about 10% of that, you'll get a fairly good looking graph. And what happens if I set the resolution to a different value? Let's say I set it to 100 and I run this again. What will happen? Well, I'll generate another plot, 
but if you look at it, the items in the plot now are too small to be seen. And in fact, not only that, but they're bleeding. You see this bleeding around the edges that's not, wouldn't be appropriate even if you could see them. You wouldn't really want that. And if I set it too large, let's say I set this to a thousand, we'll see this isn't good either because now the items in the graph, while the resolution is good, it looks good, you, they're too big for the graph. So you have to be mindful of this relationship between resolution and what you're, and the dimensions of your graph. And you kind of, there's a bit of trial and error, but also there's some rules based on what kind of graphing you do. And I would say in general, 10% or so. So I plotted it so that the resolution's 400, maybe go up to 500 here. If I plot this one, and I run this again, you can open it up, see what this looks like. So that looks pretty good too. So. 400, 500, you can play around with it until you get what you want, and you can always increase the resolution too, But what's, or you can always increase the dimensions. It can be 3,000 by 3,000, or, or 4,000 by 4,000, or 5,000 by 5,000, whatever number you want, provided that it works for your purposes. You just need to increase resolution accordingly. All right, that's all I have for today. Hopefully that's useful. Thanks. Bye.